What's up, everybody? We're doing another POV enclosure upgrade. Uh, these don't usually do as well as I would like, but we're going to keep you guys updated and, as always, fun new ways of doing different things. So, what we have here is we are going to be moving our spotted python. Um, if longtime viewers, if you recognize this kind of basic looking setup, this is actually where we put our juvenile ghost brooks king snake uh, a while ago since then she has uh like most brooks king snakes very quickly outgrown it so we've cleaned it out and we've i because the way i like how this looked i utilized a lot of the same stuff and then we've added a few more things so we're gonna i'm gonna go over everything in the cage and then we're gonna go grab him um hopefully without taking a bite i might have to put the camera down for that and so we'll do a little cutaway um and we'll see how he enjoys it so 36 by 18 by 18. This is the Zoomed one. Um, I think this is probably a good minimum for an adult spotted Stimson's or children's python. Um, he's a little on the smaller side, but that's not a big deal. Um, currently, he's in a three foot long tub in a rack, so I really wanted to get him out of there in the first place. Um, really, that's just for my hold back juveniles, like within a couple years, and then they move on to bigger ones. So, in this guy, we start with the substrate as usual. This is a mix of play sand, topsoil, and cypress mulch. Um, spotted pythons, and now including the Stimson's pythons, have a huge range across much of Australia, and thus they are used to quite a few different temperature, humidity, different types of rains, and they are fairly adaptable. So, being in a very arid part of Colorado where the ambient humidity in here is very dry. So we're talking like the fat tail geckos that have a bunch of different humid hides in there. And then the rosy boa that is over here, just ignored that. I knocked it over when I was climbing up on the ladder here. Um, <laughs> I knocked it off of the gray band cage over there that is pretty arid and dry. So this guy, because, so that's why we're going to use the topsoil and the cypress mulch that will hold a little bit of humidity, as well as we are using humid hides. In this case, we're going to take the kind of, a mix of both naturalistic and kind of just utilitarian, 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 wow, that was awful of you. So this is just a little uh, quart tub that we cut a hole in the top, filled with cypress mulch and uh, eco and cocoa coir, so basically rep the chip, and that'll act as one of the humid hides. The overall humidity will be warmer in there, will be higher in there, especially because of this large water dish that I have right here to kind of mimic burrows and holes that we would be right near a water source, but it will be significantly warmer in there. It's a pretty small opening um, because he's, you know, just a little, little guy like that. Um, this is another little Dollar Tree kind of thing. These are like the little stackable uh, pencil cases, desk organizer type things. All I did was just take some aquarium silicone sealant and just kind of glue the legs together so it's one piece, but it can still easily come out and be washed. Um, and again, because it's Dollar Tree, this whole thing was like 250 and then 28 cents worth of silicone for the four feet. This guy's pretty easy to replace. So then we're gonna talk about the other hides. So that is one hide, arguably two hides, asterisk three right there. This big one that we use with the Brooks King Snake, this is essentially an old aquarium thing. Hence these cute little fuzzy guys. And this is all one very large hide, but it's definitely very secured and tucked away. Um, here we have a, another just like regular old hide. This actually comes out of his tub, so it'll kind of smell a little bit more like home. Um, and then this really cool thing that I found at Target. This is actually a little corner container. And so this is, and I have another one that I'm going to use into another enclosure. We're going to circle that around there. So this is tucked away down there. Um, I really like this big bushy thing that would allow him to be able to kind of climb up a back if he really wanted to. This big piece of slate that acts as kind of a hide, um, at least indirectly from not only the fluorescent lighting, actually above him is LED. I'm slowly replacing the fluorescence with LED lights. Um, but the Acadia uh, little T5 strip that's right there. Um, and then we have just another little thing for him to interact with, a little thing for him to interact with, um, a couple pieces of wood that can be interchanged out and moved around, and then as always, that big water dish. So, fairly simple, but this is probably the most utilization in one of my, at least my glass enclosures of not only horizontal space and stacking in multiple heights, but also a vertical space with, um, and then here's some rocks too, um, that rocks there, 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 there. 
Um, a lot of the times what will happen when I use these bigger pieces of rock, they will actually go down and burrow underneath and give themselves another little burrow underneath there. And that's what's happened multiple times, both with the Brooks King snake, it happened with the milk snake, um, the bull snake, not as much because they're just out the, the, all the time anyway. But this is, here we'll zoom out a little bit. So there we go. Here's the full enclosure. And then we're going to grab him. And we're going to see, I'm just going to cut away, and then we're going to see how he enjoys it. That was actually fairly painless. So here we go. Here's our little spotted boy. Get it nice and close with him. So he, as we got him as an adult, um, a lot of the times what happens when we get these guys as adults, typically they're a little bit um, less into handling as babies. When you get them as babies, a lot of the times they are a little bit more amiable to that. We're just going to boop him. Boop, back in there. Sorry, buddy. I want you to check out your new enclosure first. So here we go. We just kind of just kind of popped him in there, and we're gonna see what he decides to do. And we're gonna watch him. But overall, I think this would be really cool. The Antaresia, um, or the Pygmy, or the Stimson's children spotted Pygmy pythons, uh, that whole genus. They're all found in usually semi-arid-ish type places, but they're not out. They really utilize a lot of those. Uh, more humid hides. And then I think it's actually the more Stimpsons, formerly their entire subspecies, now they're part of the spotted. Um, they are found in a little bit more tropical areas with a little bit more relative humidity. But we're just going to kind of see what he chooses to do. But they overall, in general, they do use a lot of those little microclimates, those more humid areas underneath rock hides, um, deep under burrows, and then under very permanent detritus like fallen logs and things. That's where a lot of the time these guys are found. And then obviously um, the anthill or the pygmy ones, you'll also see them along the termites and the uh, anthill things where there's a lot of also relative humidity. Although clearly not like right in the middle of them because then they'd probably just get eaten by the ants, especially down in Australia with those crazy little ants. Excuse me. So, there we go. Nothing too crazy. Where did that just fall off of? Huh. Don't know what that was. Just a little piece of paper. I think, actually, I think it came off of that off the bottom. I thought I picked it up. But anyway, so, what do you guys think? Pretty cool, I think. Um, this is definitely going to be improvement on a tub, albeit a pretty well-decorated tub that he was in. Definitely want to get him out of that. There's his little face. There he is. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Oh, well, what do you think? Do you like it? This guy really needs a name, too. If you guys have any fun names for kind of a jerk butt of a uh, spotted python, presumed male, uh, it's never really bothered me too, too much. And he certainly doesn't like me playing around down there, so I just call him a him because I don't have any plans on ever breeding him. But if you guys have any uh, fun suggestions for a name for this cool little spotted python, throw them down in the comments. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll decide to take one. But overall... Not too bad, just a quick little update for you guys as we just continue to kind of do stuff. Not too crazy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, maybe gave you a couple ideas. Um, I expect a few negative comments as usual when it comes to any enclosure thing I do, but I'm actually pretty happy with this, how this one turned out, and we're going to keep everyone updated on how he actually enjoys his new enclosure. So, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, I'm going to put this in the playlist of other enclosures of enclosure upgrades so you can see how we've done for other species, how we've improved, how I've admittedly thought I did correct research and did not, um, and explain in subsequent videos along those lines too. So you can see me kind of evolve and grow as a keeper as well. So if you want to check out that whole playlist, please do. Helps my YouTube algorithm. Hope everyone is having a great day, and we will check you next time.